Good morning. Welcome to the Lord's house for worship this morning. Today we celebrate the fact that the Word of God is indeed a great blessing to us. Through His Word, the Lord creates and preserves saving faith in our hearts. The order of service that will guide us in our worship today is printed for you in your worship folder. It will begin, however, with the gathering right on the Word. We join together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How I love your law. Your commands make me wiser than my enemies. I have more insight than all my teachers. How sweet are your words to my taste. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Yet so often we have despised God's Word and failed to gladly hear and learn it. For this and all our sins, we bow before God and humbly ask His forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner.
God gave his word so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The scriptures testify about Jesus, who lived a perfect life for you, died on the cross to pay for all your sins, and rose again to assure you of your salvation. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ, and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for planting in us the seed of your word. By your Holy Spirit, help us to receive it with joy and to bring forth fruits in faith and hope and love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first lesson from t for today is taken from the Old Testament book of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 10 through 13. God's word always brings about the results he desires. We read, Just as the rain and the snow come down from the sky and do not return there unless they water the earth, make it give birth, and cause it to sprout, and it gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so it will be with my word that goes forth from my mouth. It will not return to me empty. Rather, it will accomplish whatever I please, and it will succeed in the purpose for which I sent it. Because in joy you will go forth, and in peace you will be carried along. The mountains and the hills burst forth before you with shouts of joy, and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn, a fir tree will grow up. Instead of the briar, a myrtle tree will grow up. And it will make a name for the Lord, an everlasting sign that will not be cut off. This is the word of the Lord. We continue our worship with our psalm for today. It's Psalm number 119b, which begins on page 110 in the front part of the hymnal.
Our second lesson for today is taken from the book of Acts, Acts chapter 18, verses 1 through 11. As Paul scattered the seed of God's word at Corinth, some rejected it, but others believed and were baptized. We read, After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his life, wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. Paul went to see them because he had the same occupation. He stayed and worked with them, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath, he led a discussion in the synagogue, trying to persuade both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul was entirely devoted to preaching the word, testifying to the Jews that Jesus was the Christ. But when they opposed Paul and slandered him, he shook out his clothes and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. He left that place and went to the house of a man named Titius Justus, a worshiper of God, whose house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the synagogue leader, believed in the Lord together with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians, when they heard, believed and were baptized. One night the Lord spoke to Paul in a vision, Do not be afraid, but keep on speaking, and do not be silent, for I am with you. And no one will lay a hand on you to harm you, because I have many people in this city. He stayed there a year and, and six months, teaching the word of God among them. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. Our Gospel lesson for today is taken from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 13. This will also serve as the portion of God's Word for our sermon this morning. We read, That same day Jesus left the house and was sitting by the sea. A large crowd gathered around him. So he stepped into a boat and sat down, while all the people stood on the shore. He told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some seed fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil. Immediately the seed sprang up, because the soil was not deep. But when the sun rose, the seed was scorched, because it had no root. It withered away. Other seed fell among thorns. The thorns grew up and choked it. But some seed fell on good ground and produced grain, some 100 times, some 60, and some 30 times more than was sown. Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. So listen carefully to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what has been sown in his heart. This is the seed that was sown along the path. The seed that was sown on rocky ground is the person who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he is not deeply rooted and does not endure. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he immediately falls away. The seed that was sown among the thorns is the one who hears the word but the worry of this world and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, and it produces no fruit. But the seed that was sown on the good ground is the one who continues to hear and understand the word. Indeed, he continues to produce fruit, 
some a hundred, some sixty, and some thirty times more than was sown. This is the Gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. Children, you're invited to come forward at this time to hear the children's message. brother. Morning, children. In this bag are some seeds. What kind of seeds are those? Some corn seeds. If your mom or your dad like to plant a garden or grandpa or grandma, they take some seeds, put them in the ground, and what happens? What happens? They grow. Plant breaks through the ground like a corn plant, breaks through the ground, gets taller and taller and taller until like right now during this time of the summer, they have all the tassels, you see all the ears of corn. Then the farmers harvest the plants or the gardeners will take down the plants and take the corn and then eat it or give it to the cows. Seeds can do some really amazing things. Jesus teaches us today in, in, in the Bible that his word is like seeds. Seed. It's seed that goes not in the ground. We don't take our Bibles and stick them in a hole in the ground, but it's seed that goes right in here into our hearts. And it's seed that goes into our minds. And first of all, makes us believers in Jesus and then keeps us as believers of Jesus and also causes us to produce much fruit. God's Word which is all about Jesus, has such power. It's like a seed. So whenever you hear it, you're at church or at home or at school, Jesus is putting the seed of his word into your heart and into your mind so that you keep believing in Jesus and you want to do what's pleasing to Jesus. Let's keep receiving the seed, God's word. Let's pray. We pray. Dear Jesus, we praise you that your word, the Bible, is like seed that is planted in us. Help it always to keep growing and producing much fruit. We pray in your name. Amen. Thanks, children.
All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Dear friends in Christ Jesus, during our Savior's ministry, he spent much time teaching. He is the eternal Son of God who came from heaven and revealed to us truths about his kingdom, which we are to hear and believe. In our Savior's teaching, he so often used parables. These are the stories that he told with all kinds of earthly details, which communicate to us important spiritual truths. Christ wants us to hear and to listen. He has warnings and encouragements for us in his parables. Jesus tells us many things in parables. Today, the parable of the sower and the seed. Our Lord began, Listen, a sower went out to sow. It's a basic task for farmers, isn't it, back then and still today, to sow the seed. In ancient Palestine, and I think it's still the case today, farmers do their sowing in the fall. Spring, summer, fall, that's not the good season because it's just so hot. So they sow their seeds in the fall, wheat or barley, let it go throughout the winter months, and then harvest it in the spring, May or June. Sowers sow the seed. Back then, they didn't have precision farming equipment that could, that could put seeds on precise spots in a nice straight row. Farmers had their bag of seed at their side and they scooped in with their palm and they just whipped it out into the field and spread it all over the place. They broadcast it far and wide. That's a good picture, isn't it, of what God wants us to do with his word, to spread it far and wide. The spreading of God's word started with our Lord Jesus as he spoke God's word as the Son of God. That sowing continued with the apostles and has gone right down to today as called servants of God's word preach and teach the sacred scriptures and as all of us and all believers sow God's word. We do it in any of a number of ways. In the simple conversations we engage in with other people as, as we tell them what we believe as Christians, we are sowing the seed in the preaching and teaching that happens in our congregation and in our school, God's word is spread. In broadcasts through radio or video or through the internet, our services on our website or on community TV, God's word is spread out like seed to as many people as possible. Jesus says the sower sowed the seed. The seed is the word of God. God has given great power to seeds. On the third day of creation, God created all the plants that, that exist on our planet, and he gave them the power to reproduce. He equipped them with seed so that they would then have more plants and more plants all the way down to today. If you are a gardener or a farmer and you plant seeds, the power that God spoke on the third day of creation thousands of years ago causes that seed to germinate, sprout, and grow. So also with the seed of God's word, it has great power given to it by the Lord himself. The seed of God's word declares the best message ever, what Jesus calls the message about the kingdom. That's the good news, the gospel. The message that Christ came here to the earth to save sinners through his life and his death and his resurrection. The good news that there is full forgiveness, peace, and eternal life in Jesus. The seed of the word, the gospel, is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes. The sower sowed the seed. We sow the powerful seed of God's word. As the sower in the parable sowed, 
Some seed fell along the path. In your mind, visualize that ancient farmer with his bag of seed and sticking his hand in there, throwing it out. It's, it's going all over the place. In ancient times, there are often paths along the field, or sometimes, apparently, the paths would go right through the field. People would take the shortest distance between two points and walk right through the field and form a path. So the ground was all pounded down from people walking along that path. Seed hits the path, and it can't penetrate into the soil because it's all compacted down. Jesus says in his parable, that seed falls along the path. The birds came and they ate it up. Jesus is teaching us about one way that God's word is received, or we might say more accurately, not received. Jesus says, some hear it, but they don't understand it. And they don't then care to receive it. The evil one then comes, the devil, and he snatches the word away from them so that it's gone. That's a picture of those who don't want to hear the word of God, who have no time for it, who don't care about it. They've hardened themselves to the great message of forgiveness, life, and peace through our Savior, Jesus Christ. The devil then comes and takes it away. How often we observe such a response to God's word. Perhaps you've known somebody who's, who's very highly intelligent, and that, that is a gift from God to have, to have deep intelligence. But that person you know was so intelligent that their, their mind was really their God. And they then had had no room for God's word. God's word penetrating them was, was like throwing seed on concrete. It wasn't going to take root because they were so resistant to the word of God. Or perhaps you've known somebody who has lived in some kind of sin for a long time. They have so hardened themselves against God's word that, that, that sowing the seed is like throwing it on the hardened path and it's just, not going to gen it's just not going to germinate. What is this part of the parable saying to us? It's a warning from our Lord Jesus that we never harden ourselves against the word of God. It could happen this way. We are engaging in a sin. A fellow believer out of deep love for us comes and, and points out our sin so that we repent, but instead of repenting, we come up with excuses and rationalizations and, and continue in that sin. We are slowly hardening ourselves against the word of God. Or it might happen this way. As the forces in our culture batter against our faith, we start to capitulate in some ways and adopt beliefs that are not in keeping with God's word and, and so reject some specific part of God's word that's a hardening that we are letting happen in our own hearts. Jesus warns us, don't harden yourselves to the word of God. If we would continue down that path, the devil could come along. The old evil foe who hates Jesus and hates his word, he could come along and snatch the word of God from our hearts. So let's take this warning to heart and never harden ourselves to the wonderful teachings of God's word. And let's warn others to fellow believers who might be hardening themselves against God's word and warn them, you could lose what the Lord has given to you. Don't harden your heart against God and his word. A second response to the word of God. Other seed fell on rocky soil. Can you put that picture in your mind? Maybe you picture kind of, kind of a pile of rocks, and there, there's some soil sort of mixed in the cracks of the rocks. Seed falls in there, and, and it germinates quickly because that soil is very warm. But what's the problem? The soil is not deep. So while the plant comes up quickly, as Jesus says in his parable, 
The sun comes out, it, it scorches the plant, it withers, and it dies. What does our Savior mean with this part of the parable? He's speaking about that person who receives the word of God with joy. They, they, are, over, they, are, they, are, they are full of joy over the fact that, that God loved them and sent Christ to die for them and rise again. And, and they, they are full of, of deep gladness over the good news. But then trouble comes, Jesus says, or persecution, and sadly, they fall away because of the word of God. What a tragic part of the Lord's parable. Sadly, it's happened, and it still happens. We might think of, of a child baptized, brought into God's kingdom, given all the blessings of Christ's saving work. There is a little bit of teaching in the home, but then it ends. Faith is shallow, and it does not sustain that child as he or she grows up. Or we might think of an adult, and, and maybe you've had this experience, an adult you've known has received the word of God with, with such joy. They've been They've been just thrilled over the good news of Christ, their Savior from sin. But then some kind of hardship came along, which Jesus always warns us about in his word. Some hardship came along. They became disillusioned with Christ, and they fell away. The soil was not very deep. We take warning for ourselves over what Jesus says. And let's each of us ask ourselves, how deeply is God's word rooted in my heart? Are we content to have a shallow faith? A shallow faith that will not sustain us when trouble or hardship or even persecution comes to us because of the word of God. This part of Jesus' parable is a call for Christian education. Christian education for children. The children who are baptized into the Christian faith, it's a call for Christian education in the home. Moms and dads are teaching their little boys and their little girls God's word. They are making the most of Christian schools where God's word is taught daily so that faith keeps growing. This is a call for Christian education for adults, too. We adults recognize that learning God's word is not an activity that ends when you're 14 or 18 or 21, but it is for our whole life. We need God's word to keep taking root in our hearts and growing deeper down into our faith. A suggestion for the adults among us. If you don't have a study Bible, get a study Bible and use it in your personal Bible reading. Ask Pastor Yonke or me for some suggestions. Or if you haven't, look through our church library sometime, especially the Bible commentaries we have from the People's Bible Series, excellent commentaries on books of the Bible, a way to grow deeper in your faith by letting the roots of God's Word grow more into your heart and into your mind. And let's always keep this in mind, too. We don't know what our Savior Jesus is preparing us for as we continue to receive the word of God. Some trouble or hardship down the road or maybe even some form of persecution that, that we don't see coming at all right now. We want God's word to be deeply rooted in our hearts so that when that trouble or that hardship or that persecution comes, by the power of Christ through his word, we can endure it. Another reaction to the sowing of God's word. Other seed fell among thorns. Weeds are always the enemies of the good plants, are they? For you who are gardeners, you who are farmers, you don't want weeds in your garden. You don't want weeds out in your field as much as you can help it. The weeds steal the nutrients. The weeds hog the sunshine as they grow above the good plants. 
Jesus says in his parable, the sower sowed that seed. Some fell among the thorns. Where, where there, were the, there were the thorn seeds there too. The plants germinated. The plants started to grow, but so did the thorns. And the, and the thorn plants crowded out those good plants so that they didn't have the sunshine that they needed nor the nutrients that they needed from the soil. The good plants withered and died, choked off by the weeds. Jesus is giving us his divine instruction about spiritual growth. He warns us against the dangers to healthy spiritual growth. Our Lord identifies the weeds as, first of all, the worry of this world. Whatever might cause us anxiety as we live day to day in this world, and, and you know those anxieties, you experience them. One of them is the worry about, about having enough, having enough today or tomorrow or 10 years from now or for our retirement. Another enemy, another weed is the deceitfulness of wealth. That's a common enemy, isn't it, to our faith. Earthly wealth makes all kinds of promises. And in our culture, we hear this sentiment all the time. If you have more money, you'll be happier. If you have more physical possessions, you'll have a more secure life. Money is the answer for everything. Jesus says that is simply deceit. Money can't give us happiness. Money could never buy us eternal life only the blood of Jesus and the resurrection of our Savior has accomplished that for us. So Jesus warns us against these enemies to spiritual growth. Perhaps this part of the parable, this warning from the parable, speaks most directly to us. We spend so much time earning our daily bread. We live in a culture that is, that is full of of materialism and greed and coveting. Our Savior says, seek heavenly treasures, not earthly treasures. Well, because of our flesh so often, we turn that around and we are seeking earthly treasures more than heavenly treasures. So Christ, with all love, warns us, don't let these weeds choke off your faith. Instead, we give top priority to what is always deserving of top priority. Our dear Lord Jesus, who gave up his life for us and rose again, his precious word that teaches us the way to eternal life. We cling to Christ and to his word and put to the side all the distractions to our faith, all that can get in the way of good spiritual growth. We ask Christ to bless us by keeping our focus always on him and on his holy word. We might think by this point of the parable that this is just a story about unsuccessful farming. Nothing seems to go right in this parable. And perhaps there's a lesson from Jesus for us in that too, that as we spread the word of God, we shouldn't expect that everybody's going to receive it with great gladness and joy. Yet all is not a failure by any means. Christ says, some seed fell on good ground. This is what every farmer wants. This is what every gardener looks for. Seed that germinates. Plants that sprout and grow and produce fruit, abundant fruit for the harvest. Jesus says this is the person who hears the word and understands it. God's word takes root and deep root in that person's heart, and he or she produces an abundance of fruit 30, 60, 100 times what was sown. We thank our Savior for the fruit that his word produces in us and in our hearts. Let's be honest before God. This is not because we had fertile soil all on our own. By nature, we are resistant to Christ and resistant to his holy word. Christ himself 
made our soil fruitful and productive. His word worked a miracle inside of us by creating faith and causing faith to grow. And that faith in Jesus that lives in our hearts produces much fruit, much more than what was sown. God's word increases our faith in our Savior. God's word fills us with more love for our, for our Heavenly Father, for our Savior Jesus, for the Holy Spirit, and for one another. God's word gives us diligence as we pursue our callings in life and career and our families and our private life and our leisure. God's word keeps producing the rich fruit of, of perseverance in the face of hardship and difficulty. God's word keeps creating in us the fruit of zeal for spreading the word to more people so they too have the peace in knowing Jesus as their savior from sin. We thank and we praise Christ for all the fruit that his word produces in us. So let's keep receiving the seed of God's word. And let's receive it with great joy because it is the message about our Savior, Jesus, how he died for us and rose again. Let's encourage one another and other fellow believers to keep receiving the word of God so that it produces much fruit in them too. Let's do this for Jesus' sake. Jesus tells us many things in parables. He closes by saying, Whoever has ears to hear, let him hear. Let's close with prayer. We pray. Almighty God, your word is cast like seed into the ground. Now let the dew of heaven descend and righteous fruits abound. Amen. Let's stand and confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting Amen. You may be seated. We show our love for our Savior by giving him our offerings. Please sign the friendship register. You'll find it in the blue binder at the end of your pew. Please stand for prayer. Lord, we give thee but thine own, whatever the gifts may be. And all that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. May we thy bounties thus as stewards true receive, and gladly as thou blessed us, to thee our first fruits give. Amen. You're invited to join me in the responsive prayer of the church printed in your worship folder. As we join together to pray today, we also thank God for Mrs. Ewings who accepted the call to serve as our, our preschool teacher at TSL. And we also want to thank God for the ministry of Mark Gardner as Pastor Gardner as he um, is called to a new place to serve. So we thank God for his service in our midst. We pray. Lord God, our maker and preserver, we praise and thank you for all that you give us day after day. You have given us your precious word to nourish our souls and to protect us from the temptations of the devil, the world, and our sinful nature. Heavenly Father, we pray that you shield us from every kind of danger, 
sudden catastrophe, terrors of crime, and the pain of disease. Watch over those who travel by land, sea, and air. Keep our loved ones from whatever perils may threaten them. Bless our land, our people, and those who hold offices of high trust. Keep our government and schools upright and strong for the advancement of good citizenship and useful vocations, that we may enjoy your gifts of peace, security, and well-being. Lord of the Church, we thank you for answering our prayers by leading Maria Ewings to accept our call to serve as a teacher at Trinity St. Luke's Lutheran School. We ask you to grant her the wisdom to use faithfully the gifts you have given her to fulfill her ministry among us. Help us honor and respect Mrs. Ewings as your gift to our school. Enable us to work together with her and all the gospel ministers in our school in a spirit of harmony and love so that your kingdom may flourish among us and come to the hearts of others. Ascended Savior, we thank you for Pastor Gartner's faithful service at St. Luke's Congregation and at TSL, our school. Let his preaching and teaching of your word in our midst continue to be an encouragement to all who received it. As Pas Pastor Gartner continues to serve or continues his service in another congregation, we ask you to bless him. Cause your people there to honor and respect him in his calling and through the faithful use of word and sacrament, increase their faith and good works to your glory. We bring these requests before you in the name of Jesus our Lord and ask you to hear us. Take all that we have, our bodies and minds, our time and skills, our ministries and offerings, and use them to your glory. We give ourselves to you. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. O oh Lord God, our Heavenly Father, pour out the Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us strong in your grace and truth. Protect and comfort us in all temptation. And bestow on us your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated as we join together in our final hymn.
Good morning once again. Good to see all of you here for worship this morning. Our pleasure to share God's Word with you. Special welcome to our guests and visitors that could be with us today. I'm glad you could join us for worship. Uh, just a couple of announcements. Uh, first is our centennial offering has come to a close. And we certainly thank God that through His Word He's moved the hearts of His people to be so generous. The final numbers there are, are in the bulletin for you to see. Um, another thing I'd like to uh, draw your attention to is on the back of your bulletin, there is a uh, committee that's been working on expanding our preschool ministry. And we'd like your input. Even if you're not a person who has a child in that ministry, not a preschool parent, we still would like your input of all the members, young and old, together. Um, the the, the uh, survey can be accessed online. And if that's kind of a, a problem for you, there are some dates set where the school board committee will be here out in the fireside room with computers to help you take that survey uh, for us. We'd like to get as, as much input as we can as we look at expanding that preschool ministry. Finally today, uh, in the treats in our fireside room, you'll notice there's a cake out there. The cake is to celebrate Becky Knauss retirement after serving us for several years as our janitor. So we thank Becky for her service today. Those are all the announcements I have for you. May the Lord bless your day.